Good morning and welcome to a very special online worship experience. I'm Tanya Arneson, Senior Pastor of Jackson First United Methodist Church, and I'm so glad you've joined us today. When I originally planned my Advent sermon series called Home for Christmas, I imagined that we would be gathered here in our beautiful sanctuary in person. I eagerly anticipated the joy of being together in our church home once again. The recent surge of COVID-19 cases has required us to return to online worship once again and to help you feel more at home as you're watching out there. Deacon Greg and I are pre-recording elements of this Lessons and Carols worship here in our sanctuary. Thank you to our audio and visual texts for their support in this effort. Our readers have each recorded scripture from their own homes. Tim Munier has chosen music, uh, some of his favorite musical selections from the past few years during Advent and the Christmas season. Don Dorr has added pictures to enhance that music and Joel Randolph has added, edited everything all together. If you haven't done so already, you can download and print out a bulletin. It's a link on our YouTube page so that you can participate more fully and follow along with the readings. I want to thank everyone who has made this worship experience possible, and I pray all who watch us will be blessed by our ministry to you. Let us turn our hearts and minds to worship together with this prelude from Christ called Christmas Fantasy from 2016.
birth of Christ to come. We wait for Christ to be born in us today. With peace, we pray for the world. We pray for our communities. The Prince of Peace reigns in our hearts. With joy, we expectantly prepare for the good news of the Messiah. Joyfully, we celebrate that Christ is coming again. With love, we give selflessly, knowing God has given us the most wonderful gift of all. God's love is in us through the gift of Jesus the Christ. We look to the day when our world seems new again. We look to the light that will drive out darkness. Come, Lord Jesus, come. In a world where doubts creep in and replace faith with fear, and where people no longer know where to turn, God, we call upon you to come. In a world where so many have lost faith in your church, we call upon you, El Shaddai, God Almighty, to come. In this season of Advent, we wait for your presence to be felt in our lives again. We await the birth of Jesus, the Savior of all, who comes to set us free. Come, Messiah, come. Come and save us. Let us pray. Dear God, we pray that our faith may be renewed once again and we may relive the wonder of your love in our lives. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen.
This is the prophecy of his coming. These are selected readings from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. These are readings from the book of Isaiah.
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth is in her old age, and has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. A Prophecy from Micah But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, one whose origin is from old, from ancient days. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace.
out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. of Luke chapter 2 verse 8 and there were shepherds living in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified but the angel said to them do not be afraid I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people today in the town of David a Savior has been born. To you, he is Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and laying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appealed with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that what had hap has happened, which the Lord has told us about.
This lesson comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter, verses 1 through 9. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen the star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means among, least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they went their way, and lo, the star which has been seen in the east went before them, till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. The Magi brought precious gifts to the newborn king. It was an act of worship. We have the opportunity to worship God with our tithes and offerings. During this time of online worship, you can give in three ways. Mail your check to the church office or call Teresa Oldenburg to arrange for regular electronic fund transfer or a one-time credit card gift, or you can go through PayPal. Thank you, all of you, for your continued faithful support of your church family. Let us pray together. As we worship Christ, the newborn King, we offer our own precious gifts to continue his work in the world today. Bless our gifts and us, the givers, for the sake of our Lord's work to redeem his hurting world. Amen. I've wondered this week, can't we just move Christmas back a couple days? This month has been very intense with the move back to online worship. We've now pre-recorded three services, which is three sermons for me, in the last eight days. I haven't even started my Christmas shopping, so I just need maybe two or three more days to get ready. I haven't had room in my jam-packed schedule to add the demands of my usual Christmas preparations. When you get down to it, preparing for Christmas is about making room. We make room in our daily schedules to do our shopping and bake cookies and decorate the house and find safe distancing ways to connect with family and friends. We rearrange our furniture at my house to make room for a Christmas tree. We make room in our budgets for the extra spending and in our closets to stash away treasures from the prying eyes of grandchildren until Christmas morning. Preparing for Christmas is largely a matter of reorganizing our lives to make room for the celebration. But where does Christ fit in? The sad truth is this week, countless people around the world will celebrate Christmas without making room for the birth of Christ in their lives. They'll crowd into stores until the stores close. If they gather with extended family, they will crowd around the tree to open gifts. Then they'll crowd around a table to enjoy a sumptuous holiday feast. And too many folks will crowd Christ right out of their Christmas celebration. But then Jesus Christ began his life being crowded out. Scores of people flooded into Bethlehem. From far and wide, people were returning to their city of origin to be counted for the census. 
Most would have stayed with relatives, aunts, uncles, distant cousins. Bethlehem must have been loud with music and laughter as friends and family were reunited with one another. But there was no room for Mary and Joseph. Joseph searched hither and yon for a place to stay. No vacancy signs were posted in every window until one innkeeper, seeing Mary's huge belly, agreed to let them bed down with the animals in the stable. Not much room there, but it was enough. Enough room for Mary to give birth to a baby, God's own son, gift-wrapped in swaddling clothes. There was enough room for the shepherds to crowd around the manger to worship the tiny king of kings. There was just enough room in that stable for God to do something that would forever change the world. You know, all it takes is just a little bit of room for God to to accomplish wondrous things. Now, I want to bring these words to your attention. They found no room in the inn. Really? That strikes me as a bit odd. I wonder why didn't God provide a place for Mary and Joseph? Why didn't God make room somewhere in Bethlehem? God orchestrated and took care of every other detail of Jesus' birth. He sent the angel to Mary to announce that she would become pregnant, even told her what to name the child and the significance that his birth would have for the world. God sent a dream to Joseph, causing him to change his mind about what to do with his fiancée. God sent angels to the shepherds, the star to the uh, magi announcing the birth of the long-awaited Savior and Messiah. It occurs to me everywhere else in this birth story, whenever help and guidance is required, God intervenes, except when Mary and Joseph actually arrive in Bethlehem and begin to search for a place for the Son of God to be born. Here is the one moment when God's help is most needed, it seems to me, and yet, strangely enough, there are no angels waiting the the holy couple's approach, eager to escort them to a beautiful room already prepared for them. In a drama so filled with divine intervention, I wonder why does heaven fall silent now? Did God forget this detail? Or did God have something else in mind? The answer to this question may be found in the vulnerability of a baby, I think. I remember when my children and then when my grandchildren were born, something in their helplessness and absolute dependence called forth in me a fierce love and a commitment to protect them. From the moment I first held them close, I knew my life was never going to be the same. Their birth required me to reorder my home, my time, my priorities, my very life to make room for them. Perhaps that is the reason there is no place already prepared for the Son of God's arrival. The voice of heaven falls silent and the guiding angels are hushed because, hear this, God depends on us to find a place for Jesus' birth. Dr. Thomas Long tells a delightful story about a Christmas pageant presented in the fellowship hall of a small rural church. One of the cast members was a seventh grade boy named Wally. Shy and reserved by nature, tall and lanky in frame, Wally might best have been described as an awkward kid. When the time came for the Christian Christmas pageant, 
Wally was cast in the role of the innkeeper simply because it required so few lines. No room was all he had to say. And Wally spent hours practicing that single line over and over and over again, varying both voice and volume, trying to sound stern and forceful and resolute, like the hard-nosed proprietor he was meant to portray. No room. No room. No room. Christmas Eve arrived and the congregation settled into their folding chairs to watch befuddled shepherds in oversized terry cloth robes and worn sneakers shuffling around, looking every much as confused and dumbfounded as the sheep over which they supposedly were kept watching overnight. For their part, a noisy herd of kindergartners with shoe polish on their noses and cotton ball ears milled nervously around the stage. The sheep. <laughs> Moments later, there fluttered in the festive, feisty choruses of fourth grade angels, a heavenly host dressed in bedsheets and gilded cardboard wings. Hovering hither and yon, they paused occasionally to adjust their coat hanger halos as they sang, O come all ye faithful to the shepherds and the sheep. At last came Wally's big scene. Joseph and Mary hobbled wearily across the stage, knocked on his door and pleaded for lodging. Determined to stay in character, Wally recited dutifully, no room. But sir, my wife is having a baby. Well, that was an improvisation that poor Wally did not expect. <laughs> there was a long hesitation. Flustered and stumbling toward the couple, he stammered again, no room. And this time he stamped his foot for emphasis. Please, kind sir, won't you reconsider? Wally shifted uneasily, unsure what to do or how to answer. He knew what he was supposed to say, but somehow it didn't feel right anymore. Unable to speak, Wally looked at his feet and sadly shook his head. Joseph and Mary turned and reluctantly started back across the stage. As Wally watched them, his eyes filled with compassionate tears, suddenly, according to Long, responding to a grace that, while it wasn't part of the script, somehow seemed to embrace the moment, he startled himself, the holy couple, and the entire audience by calling out, wait a minute, don't go, you can have my room. Now, admittedly, that wasn't part of the Christmas story, but it is surely part of the spirit of Christmas. On this day, we await the birth of Jesus, God's gift of a child who, like all infants, comes into the world needy and vulnerable, depending on us to make room in our lives to love and care for him. I think no wonder there was no place already prepared. Perhaps all of heaven now waits for us to find the place for Christ's birth. In your Christmas preparations, are you making room for Jesus? Here's just a few practical suggestions. Take time to reread the scriptures in today's bulletin and think about the flow of the story from prophecy to fulfillment. Make room in your schedule for a time of quiet prayer and meditation and reflection every day. Make room in your checkbook to support a ministry for others in need. Make room in your heart to visit or call someone who is ill or lonely. These are all ways that we can make room for Christ 
in our lives each and every day of the year. Let us pray together. Holy God, we await with open arms, ready to embrace you and welcome you into our lives. Fill us with the presence of your Spirit for the sake of Jesus in this hurting world. Amen. And now for our benediction. Emmanuel is coming once again this blessed Christmas day, and he is depending upon you to make room in your life to love and care for him. May his hope, peace, joy, and love be yours. Amen.